Okay. Um, the poem is called Insomnia. My name is Lee Rossi. Another hour, I'm sure I'll fall asleep. There's gunfire in my head, not, not what I planned. It's still, it's still I hear somebody weep. My girlfriend's father thinks I'm a creep. I lost my girlfriend when I lost my hand. Another hour, I'm, I'm sure I'll fall asleep. I hear U-boats burrowing the deep. Some young Mozart plays a baby grand. It's still, it's still I hear somebody weep. I see my soldier father in a jeep driving too fast, a pistol in his hand. Another hour, I'm sure I'll fall asleep. It's harvest time out there, a time to reap. I see a desert city sinking into sand. It's still, it's still I hear somebody weep. I hear a sapper dig where waters seep. This used to be someone else's land. Another hour, and maybe I'll fall asleep. My hand's a gun, but I can't find the grip. I want to rest, but my mind says stand. It's still, yet still I hear somebody weep. Another hour, and I still won't fall asleep. I'll start with the process. I, I read a lot, and if I get lucky, I read something that inspires me, either a subject or uh, a formal invention, an image maybe, or some kind of language uh, I hadn't seen in a poem before. I, I love to mix kinds of language, formal and informal, uh, bureaucratic language and slang. When I see someone else do it well, that really gets my juices running. and. I, um, I, and I should say that I'm not the kind of poet who tries to memorialize every significant experience. In fact, until I start writing, I really don't know what's significant in my life. Um, very often, reading other people's works will trigger that kind of insight, and then I'll start writing. Um, well, uh, I can get into that by talking first about the, the poetic form, because uh, I think they're kind of mixed together. Um, the first thing I want to say about this poem is that it's something called a villanelle. And the villanelle originated in France many years ago, and it was derived from peasant songs about country life. Uh, the, the form didn't become fixed the way it is now, as you see on the page, until about the 17th century. And interestingly, more villanelles have been written in English than in French or any other language. Um, the most famous ones in English are um, Dylan Thomas's Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night and uh, Elizabeth Bishop's One Art. So what does that have to do with my poem? Um, my theme is not country or it's not rustic or bucolic. There's nothing country about it. My theme is trauma. Um, for me, the defining experience of my youth was the Vietnam War. Uh, but that was just my war. Since then, every generation of American kids has had to deal with their own war. That's the price you pay when your country is an empire. Every war and every generation produce, produces its own casualties. Not just the enemy, but also the young soldiers who go out and fight what they think is right, fight for what they think is right, or because they don't have a choice. I've written poems about war before, but this is the most formal one, the one with the most formal constraints. It's got a predictable rhythm and lots of rhyming on the sounds and and eep. I like to say that the villanelle is a poem with a repetition compulsion, a poem with PTSD. I suppose that's why I kept after it, although it took, I had to revise it many times. I guess I felt that the form was absolutely right for the subject. Uh, and you know, it took many, many attempts, uh, getting the, uh, finding the right rhyme words, making it sound like somebody talking, um, uh, shuffling the pieces around until they all seem to 
to make a, a sort of sense and a sort of progression, uh, that takes a lot of time and, and, and a willingness to play with it. I guess that, you know, I spent six months, you know, drafting the poem, putting it aside, picking it up again, fiddling with it, you know, maybe changing the line, sometimes just, you know, a comma, um, uh, then putting it back. Um, I think for me, you know, the, the most important moment was when I, I realized that I could use the off rhyme in the class deep, uh, that uh, the poem finally came together. Something, something snapped at that moment, and I, I felt that I was, uh, the poem was ready to go out into the world. Well, the most important thing is just to uh, read as much as you can. Um, I, um, I read a lot, mainly poetry, um, but, you know, if you're reading poetry or any other thing, you have to pay attention. Pay attention to what grabs your imagination. You know, I'll, I won't know right at first, you know, whether something's important or not. But, you know, maybe later when I'm lying in bed in the middle of the night and I've got insomnia, then it occurs to me, those, those important bits start popping into, popping into my head. And I'll get up and I'll write them down. And then later on, I'll, I'll go back to, to that. So, um, uh, I keep that sort of material in the journal. And then I'll go back to that and start uh, working with that and seeing where it leads me. That is so hard. I mean, I'll, I meet a lot of people in that state or that, that condition. Um, and all I can do is encourage them to read uh, as much poetry as they can. It's frustrating at first, you know, and I think a good poem will demand several readings before it kind of reveals some of its secrets. Um, I. You know, it, it took me, well, I'm, I shouldn't say this, but it took me a good 15 years of reading lots and lots of poetry before I finally uh, figured out what it was that, you know, individual poems were doing. And so, um, um, and I, I think you should read poetry that doesn't really appeal to you necessarily. I, I read, uh, I don't get spoken word poetry. I mean, it, you know, and I don't write spoken word poetry. But I do listen to it, and I do read it, because yeah, I think it strengthens my voice. It makes me more willing to kind of be expansive and open when I'm writing a poem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mentioned uh, Dylan Thomas earlier, and uh, his Villanelle, uh, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, I think is one of the great poems in English. And um, I think the reason why it's great, uh, well, there are a couple of reasons why it's great. First of all, um, it uses um, the imperative mode. It gives commands, you know, and a lot of poems don't do that. You know, a lot of poems are very laid back. But he says right at the beginning, do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. So right at the beginning of the poem, we're giving, given these two great commandments. Um, it's biblical, is what it is, you know. And then another truly magical thing about the poem is the way he flips those statements, uh, transforming them from commands into descriptions. And he uses, uh, talks about how wise men, good men, wild men, um, do not go gentle into that good night, how they rage against the dying of the light. But then, at the end, when he addresses his own father, his own father is in the last stanza, he says to his father, do not go gentle into that good night. He flips back to the, the command mode. And I, I think that's a truly rousing finish. Um, you know, and, and the poem kind of ranges all over human history and psychology, and then, you know, but then at the end, he brings it back to the very intensely personal and universal, his relationship with his father and with death. I think it's a great poem. Um, 
you know, I uh, I work with uh, Poetry Flash in the Bay Area. I uh, do reviews for them. I do interviews. Um, there's some stuff up on the, the Poetry Flash website right now that uh, I did a, a recent interview with Margaret Randall, who's a longtime uh, uh, peace and uh, anti-imperialist activist. Um, I've also got a number of reviews on that uh, on that website as well. And then coming up later this uh, uh, in early summer, uh, Poetry Flash is sponsoring the uh, Bay Area, or I'm sorry, the Northern California Book Awards. And uh, I always participate in that, either uh, in the poetry category or in the uh, translation category. And that's always exciting because you find out a lot about what's going on in the Bay Area literary world and what the really good books are that you should read.